Against all odds, arguably, 2021 has turned out to be an exciting and ever eventful time for games. It could purely be a result of us still riding off the excitement brought by the arrival of next-gen consoles, but I personally think it can also be attributed to the revival of a certain fan-favourite subgenre. We've had co-op shooters galore with the likes of Back 4 Blood, Aliens Fire Team Elite and Outriders. Remember that? Then we've also had plenty of time loop experiences such as The Forgotten City, Lemnus Gate and of course PlayStation 5 exclusive games like Returnal and Deathloop. However, the notable genre comebacks don't stop there. Hi everyone, Aaron from Push Square here, and while those other genres I mentioned are indeed pretty cool, if you're an old school gamer like me with a fondness for the 90s and early alts, then another old school genre comeback that has elated you to no end will be the 3D platformer. 3D platformers in 2021? Yes, well it might seem strange, the past couple of years has seen a slow rise in these classic jump-based experiences, wherein the only thing standing in the way of either life or death is the idea of succumbing to one massive drop. I'm glad to have this type of game back in a big way though, because in addition to offering a boatload of platforming challenges you'd struggle to find in an RPG or of course a shooter, all the best ones centre on lovable characters, most of which act as a direct inspiration for more modern PlayStation icons like, say, Sackboy. So why is this happening now? Well, if I'm being honest, the return of the old school 3D platformer looks to have been bubbling since towards the end of last year. Late arrivals like Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, itself riding off the Insane trilogy's immense success, Sackboy A Big Adventure and of course the best PlayStation packing game ever, Astro's Playroom, look to have wet players' palette ready for this year. Though all those titles set the stage for a rather bombastic 2021, where character-based 3D platformers have now truly hit their stride, and these are the games that we'll be celebrating in this video today. Of course, last week saw the launch of Demon Turf on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, a proper 3D platforming throwback that demonstrated perfectly how to pay tribute to the past while paving the way forward for the genre to succeed in the modern era. It did this by including new mechanics and providing slight genre tweaks to the established formula. And that really is the theme of these new up-and-comers to the 3D platforming genre. They're very much grounded in what's come before, while still being unafraid to innovate and push it forward. The aforementioned Demon Turf is arguably the best example of this, or at least the most recent, with its emphasis on precision platforming as well as the player's ability to set down their own checkpoints, and the game's built-in encouragement to complete levels as fast as possible. It being so long since I played a proper 3D platformer, I had almost forgotten just how many of these genre entries were all about getting from one point to another as fast, but often as creatively as possible too. Demon Surf might start off with a focus on simple dashes and double jumps, but before you know it, you're being asked to chain a wall jump into a boost dash, into a glide and then into a hover, in order to reach certain specific places. Don't be fooled by its punkish 2D aesthetic, Demon Surf is definitely no slouch when it comes to giving your controller a workout and having you build up a sweat. Another way Demon Turf harkens back while simultaneously innovating is in its lack of hand-holding. Because while the game's individual hub worlds do do a decent job at pointing you to each level's platforming challenges, once inside them you're really on your own in terms of how to progress. It's made all the more evident by how extremely open some of these turfs actually are. Do you ferry on up the side of this cliff in search of a cake needed to unlock upgrades, or do you dive into the beach's accompanying ocean in search of a secret area? 3D platformers, unsurprisingly, have always been about exploring a 3D space, but Demon Turf understands that exploration, often in the hopes of finding collectibles, can sometimes be equally as important too. In short, Demon Turf is an absolute blinder of a modern 3D platformer, and part of me hopes that it doesn't get swept under the rug in amongst all of these big heavyweight titles releasing later on this November. I'd encourage you to check out our official on-site Push Square review, linked of course in the description below, to learn even more about what we loved about it, as well as just how much stuff it manages to pack in. screen size bosses, remix levels and side quests are all part of this package. Another 3D platformer that represents the complete package this year is quite literally old school. 
But while Psychonauts 2 might look to merely be a simple extension of the traditions and structure featured in the 2005 original game on the surface, the truth is that Raz's follow-up journey into the minds of his fellow comrades is an excellent case of how a modernised sequel should be handled. And let's be honest, with Double Fine at the helm, we should have never been in any doubt. Psychonauts 2 might be a sequel, but it's made immediately clear almost from the off that this is the true vision that Double Fine studio head Tim Schafer always had in his mind, if you pardon the pun. The game's scope and level design are both so grand and so improved that it almost makes the first game look like a simple prologue, and how many other 3D platformers can you say that about? Do the 21st century visuals and refined button controls help in rendering Psychonauts 2 as a great modern 3D platformer? Sure, but so too does the variety found in each of the brains you're able to explore as Raz, as does the interconnectivity and sheer detail found in all three available hub worlds. One of the best things about this sequel, 16 years in the making, is just how refreshing all of the stages you visit end up being. No one idea or concept is ever repeated, one minute you're getting the band back together within a rainbow-laden hippie utopia, and the next you're pulling off a hotel heist all in the effort to pull information. It's a simple reminder that 3D platformers is one of the few genres where remaining flexible is a welcome feature rather than an element that actively works against it. Hardly is there ever a need or desire to stick to just one particular theme or setting, as you might see in some other certain genres. Psychonauts 2 understands this more than most rather beautifully, letting you interact with all these ideas using a suite of creative powers and of course different manoeuvrability options that really brings each stage to life. Demon Turf and other indies are always riffing on pre-established formats, but I don't think I was the only one that felt a huge breath of fresh air when Psychonauts 2 released to prove what this genre is capable of when lent the AAA sensibilities and budget it so often deserves. Thank heavens it was well received, because hopefully it won't be too much longer until genre entries of this calibre can once again become an industry mainstay. The final major 3D platformer emblematic of this recent rise came out swinging right at the beginning of this year, again propelling the genre forward for a 21st century audience by spinning through all kinds of mechanics and different puzzle varieties, it did this while tapping into another old school feature, split screen co-op. This aspect is obviously the bread and butter of It Takes Two, an early Game of the Year contender from the same team behind 2018's A Way Out, to the point that only one copy is ever required for two people to play. Now isn't that nice? Level variety is once again the spice of life for shrunken down husband and wife duo Cody and May, but the emphasis on co-op lends the 3D platforming fun a unique flavour not too often seen elsewhere. Putting aside the fact that the whole being reduced to the size of an ant aspect allows for jewel dropping level after jewel dropping level, it takes two excels in making you and your partner operate as a team, almost going beyond the typical realms of a standard 3D platformer to constantly keep the puzzles and action fresh. The sheer amount of game mechanics Haze Light Studios was able to include is nothing short of mind boggling, as you shoot honey, ice skate, ride spiders and do so much more all in the effort to get back to your daughter and return to normal size. In a way, It Takes Two is a bit of a double-edged sword in terms of accessibility though, because while its insistence on online or split-screen co-op is what absolutely helps it stand out, ensuring that you and a friend are always free to see the game through to its end can be a big ask. Even still, the clue is very much in the game's title, It Takes Two, and we wouldn't want to experience this chaotic field minuscule adventure any other way. It really is co-op 3D platforming at its absolute finest, and yet another example of why the 3D platformer is beginning to rise again. So there you have it in terms of my thoughts and theories as to why 2021 has been one of the best years yet in terms of the return of the 3D modern platformer. This is a genre that exudes so much charm and so much creativity, it really would be a shame to see it go. Um, so fingers crossed that, you know, that isn't the case and we'll get to see plenty more in 2022 and beyond. But if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, be sure to let me know by leaving a like on this video and consider subscribing to the Push Square YouTube channel for everything else PlayStation related. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.